Okay, can anybody notice a pattern here? Because I reviewed Jupiter's Legacy and Netflix cancelled that. I then reviewed Bone and they also decided to cancel that. So today I'm reviewing Lady Killer, which was picked up by Netflix for an adaption, and honestly, I wish it the best of luck. With Roof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus aka The Mad Dog and we're back with another video. Written and illustrated by Joel Jones with Jamie S. Rich also working on the script. The first issue of Lady Killer was published by Dark Horse Comics in January of 2015, with the tenth and final issue being released in August of 2017. And Josie Shuler lives the ideal life of any woman living in the 60s. She's a good housewife, has a healthy family, and she also has a part-time job as a hired hit woman. Working for the Mafia, Josie manages to weaponize her innocent appearance and the prejudices of the time to infiltrate and reach targets that your average hitman just wouldn't be able to. But when her employer doubts her loyalty, and the connections that she holds dearest are deadlier than those that she works for, can Josie survive when her two lives come crashing together? Now it might seem like I've been a little bit too in love with the art of the books that I've reviewed quite recently to the point where it might feel a little bit disingenuous. Maybe it might feel like I'm just giving praise because of the effort, because of the fact that I really can't draw for shit. But when it comes to Lady Killer, I'm gonna have to use a word that I only use in a few occasions, like when I've looked at myself in the mirror after the gym, or maybe I've just seen a picture of Kamara Roosman because by god this book is gorgeous. I loved pretty much everything about this art and straight away it was immediately striking that everything just looked like it was a poster. And then I looked a little bit into it after I'd finished reading the book and that was one of the inspirations for it with Joelle Jones. So I think it's great that it evoked that feeling in me before I even knew that that was the intention. It is a textbook idyllic style that you would expect for something that is set in the 60s. That sounds like it's some kind of new tongue twister. But everything from the layout, the pencils, the details, the depth of background, the positioning, the panelling, all of it was absolutely top notch. And what was best and that I noticed straight away from issue one is that every character is designed in such a way that you can tell that there's a story about them. No two characters look the same except for maybe Josie's kids and I just found myself looking at the detail of what everyone was wearing. And that's not just an issue two before you start accusing me. Although I'm not gonna lie, you know, your boy was looking. But everything from the clothes that they wore to the way that the facial expression was or how they stood, it began to help me formulate a story and wonder who this character is. Is. But then I took a step back and realised that this is a book where deception is a massive part of the plot. So it tied in perfectly with that theme of appearances and not taking everything at face value. But in the beginning, this style did remind me a lot of Archer. And I wasn't sure if it was supposed to be some kind of spin-off or anything like that, but pretty quickly it did separate itself. But I think the real reason why the art pops so much in this is because of the colours. It's bold, it's vibrant, and it makes me feel like I'm living in this textbook rosy 60s America. But on the flip side, it changes it up for the killing and the violence, and the colours leave Leave nothing to the imagination. Blood's everywhere, bones get broken, and strangled people turn purple. And on top of that, the colours knew when to really turn up the saturation, which is something that I had to learn from my thumbnails. But particularly during a kill, I love when pretty much the entire page would just turn red. Even if it does feel a little bit on the nose, it was a great choice, and it was really jarring when those moments happened, but as they became more frequent, I actually became more used to them. The detail and setting is another massive part of this book, and it's the reason why I think it was set during this certain time period. I'd have been disappointed if it decided to go with this time but then had all these bland backgrounds and you couldn't really experience the world. The cars are phenomenal and even the locations that characters visit, all of it just makes the world feel lived in even if it has got a bit of a pop art style to it. And what I like in particular is that every setting isn't perfect. When we're in Josie's kitchen I like that there's plates piling up high, maybe the bin hasn't been taken out or maybe there's just some dirt on the side. It's not the crystal clean showroom that I initially expected because you know the woman's busy, she's got killings to do. And there's one page in particular that still sticks with me where you're looking at the side of a house but you can see every room inside it and in each of those rooms there is a story going on even if we never focus on it and it just constantly gave me this feeling that I could have been told three or four different stories and if you don't believe me you can check out this book for yourself by picking it up from the channel sponsor Organic Price Books. They've got great packaging, fast shipping and amazing customer services and if you use code woof woof you'll get two dollars off your order and if you're ordering three or more books and you want them to be delivered together make sure you use code woof woof ship it together for five percent off your entire order. Don't where you can just copy and paste them from the description down below and you can use these codes as many times as you like. Now this might be an odd criticism but I did notice that on a lot of the pages it felt like it was just missing a lot of shadow to the point where it made me feel that maybe there were some things that were just a bit unfinished and the only reason 
reason I'm pointing that out is because of how high quality everything else was from an art standpoint. But it's similar to when a video or a movie is overly lit and there's just this artificial feel about it. Who knows, maybe it was intentional to give it that 60s look where TV shows did have this kind of vibe and in that case, you know, it worked. There's also a great variety of action in here. You've got car chases, you've got fights, you've got on foot chases as well and everything from the paneling, the sense of motion, the framing and the angle was just great. And yeah, this book was dynamic and interesting from page one and there was no moment of action that felt like it was just trying to steal the thunder. It was something that came before it. One last thing on the art and maybe this does come under the wording but I just love the use of onomatopoeia. And the font just always seemed to be exactly on point whether it's somebody crashing into something or maybe just somebody knocking on a door. It just helped add to the world and gave you that extra sense of oomph. Getting into the story of this book and it had a phenomenal pace. It was one of those titles that I heard nothing about until it got published in this fancy hardcover so good going from Dark Horse because it did get me to pick this up but pretty quickly I could see why this got the acclaim and it got picked up for an adaption. I read this in just a couple of settings but it still felt like I got a complete story and what I really liked is that it didn't waste time with an origin story. It throws you in at the deep end, Josie's already an assassin and I'm not sure if I missed it but you couldn't really figure out how long she'd been in this business and I like that there was that naivety to it, she was a bit vulnerable but at the same time you would hate to be the person that she's coming after. She wasn't at the top of the food chain but you can tell from the other people that you saw throughout the Mafia that she'd already gained a lot of respect. The only hiccup in the pace that I found was in the transition from volume 1 to 2, which I guess was understandable and I get the feeling that because they brought it out as a new issue number 1 that they were hoping that new readers would jump on at that point. But in reading this all together, when I did get to that halfway point, it did feel like the book did a bit of a reset. In saying that though, even if it caused the pace to slow down, it allowed the book to develop even more. This isn't major spoilers, but volume 1 is about Josie working as part of another organisation, whereas volume 2 is about her setting up her own business this venture. And I found that more interesting because the problems were more personal for Josie. There was that sense that the safety net was gone and that one wrong move would have resulted in just a worse situation for her life. And after the first couple of issues of volume 2, I did feel like it picked up a lot of the pieces that were left behind in volume 1, so it did come full circle to give us a more complete story. And what I liked is that it didn't fall into the trap of having the biggest threat at the start of the series. And then sort of maybe getting rid of them too soon and having to scrape something together so that you can close out the book. And trust me, I've reviewed a lot of titles where that's happened. But in saying that, the problem that she had to go up against in Volume 1 was still difficult and tough. It was just that they planted more seeds so that in Volume 2 there was just something worse for her to go up against. Which meant that it had that element of it being far more personal, which is what I liked about this book most. Although I originally started reading this for the concept, I stayed because of Josie and I wanted to see what happened to her. Additionally, the twists and developments in Volume 2 were far superior. <laughs> it feels odd that I'm comparing these two volumes so heavily because of the fact that they're all one part of the same story. It's like when people compare the box office of Avatar to Avengers when at the end of the day all the money's going to go to Disney. The only reason I'm drawing up this comparison here because I think it's a testament to just how good this book is. That it managed to get better the longer it went on and I'm not sure if originally there was just going to be a volume 1 and she later developed a volume 2 which gives me belief that hopefully there will be a volume 3 but I'm going to talk about that a bit later. But considering that the first issue grabbed me in to the point where I read all of volume 1 in one setting and still managed to improve in volume 2 I think is just great and it's a reason why a lot of people People would probably enjoy this series. But to immediately jump back into the comparing, one thing that Volume 1 had a lot more of than Volume 2 that I wish wouldn't have been the case is more scenes of Josie plotting out her kills. Because there were scenes towards the beginning of this book where you saw her using her skills to try and infiltrate places or get closer to a target. And a lot of my intrigue towards this book was seeing how a character like her in the 60s could get into these places that a male assassin couldn't. And yeah, a lot of it is wearing skimpy outfits like you'd probably expect. But Volume 1 gave me a lot of that planning to the point where she'd get a new mission, I could theorise how she might manage to do it. And I was wrong about 9 times out of 10. But Volume 2 didn't have as much of that and it's a good job that I like Josie as a character because of the fact that if you don't get attached to her personally, you might not find it as interesting. The killings do take more of a backseat which is just part of the evolution of the story but at the same time it was just a bit disappointing that some of the kills that looked most extreme and most fun were just included as part of a montage. One thing that I did want more of, which comes as a surprise even to me, is seeing more of Josie just going about a family life. Unless it was a conflict with a mother-in-law, they really just got pushed to the background. And there were some scenes of her trying to be a wife and maintain that image, but her husband was so oblivious they just didn't really last that long. Now don't get me wrong, comics are very rarely made better because of the fact that kids are in them, but at the same time I did want to see the thing that I brought into this book for, which was her trying to balance this double life, but at some points it felt like there'd just be a scene of her making dinner and they'd just go, yep, that's good enough, and just get back to what they were doing before. Because in those early issues, what I liked was her integration of trying to 
balance getting these weird calls at the same time that she's serving dinner or having someone knock on the door and she's got to try and disguise it so that her husband doesn't get suspicious. But I just wish that there was more of that so that I could want for her to maintain a better family life. And in all honesty, besides a mother-in-law, I just didn't care about her family because they weren't in it enough to really have an impact. But to get back to the positives, one of the things that I really liked about Josie is that she had these lines that she wouldn't cross. And that had a knock-on effect for it. it really reminded me of the end of Scarface. But not the exact same way. Because that was what I felt really separated this from other books when you've got some kind of mercenary or assassin that you just get the feeling that they'd do anything for a bit of money. The line that Josie wouldn't cross wasn't really a surprising one but it was just great that they had that in there to prove that she was a different kind of character. And it allowed her to develop a bit because she had to find a way to get out of that situation but then still cover it up so that her employer didn't know about it. And of course yes it did further the plot so it was all good in the end. If I'm being honest all of the characters to do with the assassination side of things were really interesting. Mr Peck was a character that I wished was in this more rather than just appearing in a few scenes as he really gave me that Archer vibe I genuinely thought it was him at first. And it was also just fun seeing the flirty tension between him and Josie and I felt like this could have propelled the book much further. But for the time that we had him in it he was still a great character and he brought with him this great sense of history that stuff must have happened before the book that I then had to piece together. Mr Stenholm was an interesting character as well and again he was just pretty much in the background and I like that all the agents pretty much go by Mr and then a last name and you always get the sense that you don't really know who they are and I just like that he reminded me of a stereotypical boss like he could have been running some kind of newspaper and I probably wouldn't have noticed much of a difference. But as you probably know I am a bit of a dumb reader so that's one of those things that you just kind of have to allow. Irving also became a far more important character than he initially anticipated and had this book been longer I would have been far more alert to every character that's pretty much just introduced for a couple of pages because you wouldn't know if they're going to become more important later on in the story. Now I don't really want to do a spoiler review for this video because of the fact that I feel like this book hasn't been out that long and also it's had a bit of a resurgence because of the announcement of the upcoming adaption unless Netflix cancels that but this has a very somber ending that I was a big fan of. I don't need everything tied up neatly. Made me feel a little bit shitty by the end of your book because if I'm being honest I'll probably feel that about 10 minutes into my day anyway. But it did also have a great fight that felt like a massive payoff to everything that had been built up before. Everything that I'd seen incorporated into action moments earlier than this all came back just to bring it to this massive spectacle. And the book really ended on a high to the point where I'd be happy if this was the conclusion and we get no more Lady Killer. But at the same time, I do really hope that a volume three is coming. But it is kind of like Pandora's box. Do I want another volume of this? And maybe it ends up being bad and it ruins the reputation of the entire series series? Or do I just want to know what's going to happen either way? I'm not too sure, but I like the book that I got here. This is my final verdict, and it's a shame that non-superhero comics are often overlooked in this media. I'm guilty of it myself and not broadening my horizons, but unless it comes from image or it's some kind of true timeless classic that transcends the medium, a book that's a little bit different can often get overshadowed until it fades into obscurity. However, sometimes the announcement of an adaption or a new fancy edition can breathe new life into a title. And when it comes to Lady Killer, I'm so glad that that happened. This is a great book that won't take you too much time to read, but it will give you a fun, condensed story that's just got phenomenal art. And what more can you really ask for in a great comic? In 10 issues, Joelle Jones showed us a snapshot into Josie Shuler's chaotic double life, mixed in with a pinch of espionage and betrayal. And I love near enough every moment of it. My only real criticisms of this book is that there wasn't enough of the stuff that I did like. This comes highly recommended, especially if you're looking for a little bit of a break from super hero comics or maybe you want to hear what all the buzz is about before the adaption comes out if it ever does and i'm not saying that this book's perfect but it is a damn good time and because of that it's going to get a very high score of 80 percent Woof woof! So that's my review, and if you've read this title, let me know what you think about it in the comments below, or join us over on our Reddit page. But I guess that's the video, and until next time, just make sure that you stay safe, and stay mad all you dogs. Woof woof! See you at the next video.